Fuck chat. I can't, I can't do it no more. I can't do it. I can't, my hair is in my face all the time. It makes, it makes just, just life f***ing annoying. I'm just going to get a pair of scissors and at least cut at least like that. Because I, I can't do it. It makes everything just unenjoyable. Like, everything is just not... I, 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 I want to punch the, the air. I want to punch everything. Uh, I say, it's me, they see it, but play with us, you f***. Put his body in the truck, then we take him to the dump. And they know we play for keeps, and they know that we ain't sweep. Grab a brew, we finna sweep. O block finna clean the streets. Boy, you better grab a heat or get put up on a T. Put your name back RIP or your name get turned to weed. In the racket, ain't no pad. Any state, we on your. No matter where, nickel flag. Fuck the. We ain't goofy, do that crash. We gon' spin and spin again. We gon' hit our last friends. We gon' show them we ain't playing. We gon' leave them where you stand. That's really, yeah, that's all I wanna be successful. Right, be cool fast, man. Check it out. Hey, no, since you're here, you got to throw a pop block. How do I do that? Yeah, throw a pop block. We're here in the uh, Parkway Gardens Housing Development in Chicago, otherwise known as O Block. A uh, 24 building complex on the city's south side. It's where Michelle Obama grew up, and it's also where drill music began around 10 years ago. This is Bostock. He's been here for a super long time, so he's gonna take us back to the very beginning where it all started. Holy right now, you're on 44. You're in one of the gutterest buildings in the block. This motherfucker will be the last building to get cleaned up. Oh, it's a roach. So y'all have the project? Huh? It's a roach. That's a baby roach. That's gonna get bigger. That's gonna get bigger. Smoking the roach and killing the rat. This bitch be dirty as hell. This bitch be dirty. I'm from this building. Bro, I used to be one of the motherfuckers to piss in the hallway and on the elevator too. I ain't gonna lie. My mom in the bathroom on BDN. There's one bathroom in here. I'm just gonna piss in the hallway. I still won't touch the buttons on the elevator. I'm straight knuckles. Cause you think there might be pee on it? Spit, pee, ink. I used to do all types of shit to the elevator. I ain't taking no shit though in here. True that! Why? True that! Come on, come on! Love you, my nigga. Love you too, boy. I'm true that. Look, you mean the elevator? I was just sitting in it? Love you, man. My nigga, true that. I guess I'm gonna be here, bro. Hey, hey, everybody. What's up? How's it going? How you doing, man? That's what's cracking like. You feel me? Eeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
What was one of your favorite memories of you and uh, OD? Yeah, oh. Man, I got a lot of them bitches on O. <laughs> he had this crazy ass dog named 50, bro. Oh, save money, bro. Skip, skip that motherfucker. I'm not gonna skip. I, I, I like his documentaries or his like shorts. Of, uh, and you're, it's easy to get videos. Oh, like, oh, oh, uh, like, what's up? What's up, bro? On Keto, I'm like, boy, I ain't playing with my fucking dog, bro. Y'all oh, tripping. Motherfucker run up on me. Ah, oh, boy, boy, it burned. Ah, it's your bitch ass song. Oh. Right now to this day, I still don't play with people's dogs. I don't give a fuck if that bitch a chihuahua. Bro, get your dog before that bitch die. I'm gang. OD's murder was allegedly in retaliation for the murder of Shondale Tuka Gregory, a rival gang member who lived just a few blocks away on 63rd. Sorry, sorry. It was the sad years of my life, because I had just had my first child and everything. I'm really like traumatized. Like, I ain't know if was I supposed to crash out or fall back. And my mom used to be talking to me like, man, you got a daughter. Don't be like these niggas, don't die. How many uh, friends do you think you've lost since then? Over 10 dead on this game, like two motherfuckers a year. I swear to God. Owen Platoon and motherfucking 11. Trout and Whitey and Twill. We got LA and J Money and, and motherfucker died in 13. My, my crowd gone. Hey, I gotta hang with up on them. I gotta hang with up on them. I ain't gonna stunt. When, when, it seemed like when folks died, oh. folks' career took off. When old passed away, folks took that shit to another level. Chief Keith and Dirt them came out. Why people hey, let this bitch up, you feel me? So it's like. Shortly after Odie's murder, a close friend of his decided to make his first song, which would serve as an O Block anthem Chief, to celebrate the life of Odie and this Shondell Tuka Gregory. This friend was named Keith Cozart, aka Chief nah, Keith. Nah, Chief Keith playing hard though. Oh, I do drugs to long day. O Block, we see bitch. Middle fingers to Shondell. I get out. On my son, I get out. October 4th, 2011. This bitch get the going up. The block bust him, I just got out. I get out, I see Patone and White White. Fools got cocky as hell. I'm looking, I'm like, how the fuck y'all let OD get killed? Patone put his head down. He like, man, go take your daughter upstairs. I'm gonna holler at you. I take my daughter up. I remember Inky D them came up there. Deep as hell, everybody coming eight. Happy as hell. Fat Mac and Stu get to showing out. They get to fight. Hey, hey, Fat Mac. You remember I got out of jail, you want Stu start fighting that day? Him and Stu get to fight. <laughs> Hey, phone him like me, y'all showing out because folks just got out. Uh, uh, yeah. Dirk and Reese come see me on oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I don't know, but yeah, I think it's important to say, okay? You know, you know what's really, really weird to me, okay? Is that a lot of these songs, I feel like a lot of people think, okay? I, I think, they think that it's like, um, you know, what happened in a song, in a story that they, that they tell or whatever, right? But for me, it goes, it's like the energy they put in it. And yeah, because it comes from drama, it comes from, from like sometimes like struggle or big things out or very bad things, it makes the, that energy come out, right? I consume that energy, that's what I like a lot, right? And it sucks there has to be something that's so negative and so like um, dark to get there, right? Because I don't think this in the lyrics, right? But I can tell there's something going on when they get that fucking, that, that inner, that juice going, right? Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Because I don't think this in the lyrics, anyway. I, I'm like, I'm feeling love like a motherfucker. I'm you damn, feel? Folks, don't, folks don't come rap with me. I'm mad. Fuck oh guy, I don't fuck oh that, you know? You know they rap so for me, me boom, 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 I, boom. I, don't need, I don't need rap to talk about like, like murder and death and drugs and bitch assholes and big fat booty bitches. I don't, I don't need that. But since they gonna replace up that sometimes and they, they put the song and they, they, that energy comes to that, I can do the energy, man. But it kind of sucks that it has to, be, you know. You know? We talking all us and that bitch crying now. I'm like, damn. I just got out. We all crying right now. I'm like, the fuck? I'm fucked that. We ain't crying. We out here. We get outside. In the next two years, Chief Keef would go from a young O Block rapper to one of the most commercially successful rappers in the world with hits like I Don't Like and Hate Being So. Yeah! And before you knew it, white America was doing the hokey pokey to murder music and unknowingly singing along to the anthems of an actual gang war playing out in real time. For a year, the conflicts of Oblock were a mystery to the general public. That was until one man came around and exposed the inner workings of Chicago's gang war to the world. So 2010, 2011, I'm in college and I'm doing commentary about hip hop. I had like, you know, some hot takes about like Kanye and Drake and stuff like that at the moment. So I was kind of gaining an audience. And I remember when the drill scene popped off. 
and I remember doing a video on Keith, and I was like, I love the music. So I'm reading the comments, and everyone was like, yo, you're not telling the full this story. This guy. Okay, because like, I I'm going in there, and I'm doing a quick video, and I'm like, yo, all his ops is dead. You know what I mean? He's dissing them. It's over. You know what I mean? Like, these guys, we don't even need to know their names. And everyone was like, well, no, they're not dead. And actually, the guys who, who he's dissing, just kill his guys. They were talking about people like Lil J. They were talking about like the FBG gang. Nigga, fuck T Roy and OD them dead bitches. I'm like, yo, nobody knows these people, like, respectively, because they don't have a hit song. Chief Keith is going crazy with hit songs. So I made this page called The War in Chirac, and I started covering basically oh, like, just constant feuds that were happening. It's your boy DJ Academics, and now in from. Talk in five seconds. Really? No? Information has come to my attention. Now y'all know I call Lil Reese the Chirac Grim Reaper. Well, pretty much because every time you look through his mentions, you see a bunch of dead niggas. CBS Chicago is reporting that a 15 year old boy, aka Lil Nick from Six Hunter, was shot multiple times and then he was brought to a hospital where he was pronounced dead by the Cook County Medical Examiner. At least he died doing what he loved best. Someone Bro, actually told me that these guys act. Bro, who is talking? Is that Lil Bro? No! actually keep score no! on killing and coonery within Chirac. The most valuable coon is probably a legit award. The war in Chirac never stops. The coonery never fucking ends. No! Make sure you like, subscribe, and share. His war in Chirac series went viral, and the fans were now aware of the ongoing Chicago- Yeah, guys, I'm, I'm from what Chicago. What are those uh, streams bro. back? Bro, I was in college and shit like that, bro. And, and this guy did just shot the other guy, and then... Okay. And I, I, well, particularly wait, as it pertains the to the up, rappers man? involved. What happened? How many people do you think have died in the war in Chirac? Thousands. This past weekend, at least 52 people were shot, eight of them killed. Oh, I was in the following that. years, young, between okay. 2011 and 2020, 5,518 people were murdered in Chicago. Jesus. To the amusement of self-proclaimed Chiracologists who created a Reddit page, which now has over 175,000 members. But I'd never seen a place where life was valued less than Chicago. To this day, I've never been to Chicago. Chad Lincoln, I feel like things bad everywhere. Things just bad in Chicago because like, this shit came like a movie to people. Like when it first got famous, people started like, it was like we was characters. Like damn, well, like, not that. like a assassin. Drilling itself is an energy oh my God. that once people latch onto that shit and you become invested in the story, it's like a soundtrack to a movie. And, and it sounds bad to say, but it's a soundtrack to a movie that you're watching fly. You know, I'm looking at this not oh, like on some voyeuristic like, you know, just made the biggest oh shit, mistake. this is like entertainment. Okay, I'm like horrified. Careers. What I try to do is satire, hoping people could look at that and be like, that looks ridiculous. These dudes, like, they're disgusting, right? People took it and they ran with it. Everything I thought that people would be like, yo, this is some sick shit they loved. We have a bloodthirsty audience, especially in music. The more people die when someone yeah, gets- Yeah, this is how I feel about, about AK's voice on there. Yep, that's the one. If I wouldn't have slowed down, y'all was not gonna catch me. And let me be in that new scat pack, I'd have took off on y'all dumb ass. You two fuckers just made the biggest mistake of your lousy career. If I- it's Locked up their streams and through the roof. Music sales, whew, going through the roof. Trust me. I was a driving force in getting some of these guys, other than Keith, eyes and attention and ears to some of the, their stuff. Did you feel responsible for like inflaming gang tension on the streets by covering things? Hell no. But l let me tell you this, accountability is hard to take, man. They say, yo, well, you gave people nicknames. And when you gave someone a nickname of Grim Reaper, some other guy is going to start killing more to try to get that nickname. And I'm like, I don't believe I caused any murder. Whoa, whoa, but if you, whoa, whoa. if my videos, because they were popular, instigated any two parties, I'll take blame for that. But motherfucker, if you picked up the gun, I'm not taking blame for what you did, right? When I started covering Warren Chirac, niggas was dying every day already. I was on Twitter watching people bleed out. And I was like, I can't believe this is, like people getting shot like dogs, bleeding down, everybody filming it. And then you go on social media and everybody's saying, I'm smoking on the pack. So you got to take blame for, for you doing that. The parents got to take blame for not being in the kid's life. The cops got to take blame for them basically just like throwing their hands up in the air and saying, let everybody kill each other. Like these motherfuckers, that, like everybody wants an easy scapegoat. Listen, stop acting like a bitch ass nigga and just fight, bro. Leave the pipes alone, fight, 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 fight. Oh, 
it's so fucked up now. It's like a twelve year old just said, "Ah, oh, pop you." So not a twelve year old. You like, bro? Just fight him. Why do you think that happens? Cause yeah, motherfucker think it's about being a shooter or a killer. Music played a part, but music won a hundred percent. Why everybody doing this? It's your fucking mama and your fucking daddy. You get what I'm saying? It's your mama and your daddy, bro. It's not, it usually be your environment, but it's your mom and your fucking dad's about how you getting raised, blood. Like, raise your fucking kids right. Oh, oh. I don't think it's drill music at all, I promise you. If, if we was facts. to take drill music holy, away right now. Holy shit, how does this guy, it's spinning so many facts. But, dude, though, I, I literally preach this almost every day on on strip. I almost preach this every day, man. That is and mega daddy, facts. Bro. It's not, it usually be your environment, but it's your mom and your fucking dad's about how you getting raised, blood. Like, Raise your fucking kids right. Oh, oh. I don't think it's well, real music. That. I always say that. Did you, you could at least catch like five times I said on stream. Did, did, did it. Parenting. Raise your fucking children correctly, man. Oh, I promise Stop you. Stop blaming. If, if we were to take. Stop blaming this, that, and social media and whatever. I'm not even talking about uh, like, like, like murder and shit. I'm talking about just, the, just more, more general stuff. Bro. People need to stop fucking blaming and scapegoating and being, oh, it's social media. Oh, no, it's the internet. Oh, it's, it's, the, it's the age of the. It's the generation. Man. It's the f raise your fucking children properly, bitch ass. It's do your music away right seriously now. Seriously though, man. And it be regular hip hop. It's still gonna be the same type of violence. Everybody wants man. to be. A, everybody want to be a character now for the internet. On social media, beefing, making threats. What is it? Okay, slots guy. That's that goes hand in hand with what I do. I don't raise you, bitch. I stream games, motherfucker. I play games. Want to get raised? Go to your fucking parents. Not my job to raise you and give you moral standpoints, bitch motherfucker! I play games! That's making crazy comments, like going on live, you know, it's like, you know, waving the gun in the fucking camera. Um, you know, it's like, it, it's, it's, it's almost like a competition to see who can push it the furthest and get the most attention. Because, you know, th there is a fair amount of clout chasing, and, you know, that is a toxic element. In that way, do you think that drill is, like, bad for society? No, because the thing is, like, the, the realities of what is being discussed in that music was, was there before the music was there. The music is just an expression of that, it's just a reaction to that. Like, when you're talking about inner city gun violence, you're talking about poverty, you're talking about poor education systems, you're talking about, like, low access to food, you're talking about low economic opportunities. Those are the kinds of solutions that you would need to apply to that situation. If you could go back in time, would you make Warren Chirac again? You know, you know, I've grown, was it appropriate? Probably wouldn't do that again. I wouldn't do it again just because um, I think we're dealing with mental illness in Chicago. And when you see people are kids, these people who are doing murders, like Ronald number nine was like 17, doing drills and all that type of shit. It's easy to be outraged and also say, damn, how could you guys take a life so easily? But also you got to think about the cycle of mental issues that they're having, the trauma that they're suppressing. After the success of the- I understand some kids don't have, don't have like full parents and sometimes they're like single mothers, whatever. I get it, they're outlying data. Okay, and that's, that, 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 that's what other systems should, should, should kick in. And a lot of times the fucking government fails people, okay? In a lot of areas, the government and, and, and the civil, they, they fail their communities and they fail people. And I understand that there's outlying, there's outlying people and there are people that, are, that have it way harder, with harder hands to, harder hands to play. Okay, but that's not everybody. Okay. The Not Warren everybody. Chirac series academics formula was replicated hundreds of times, creating a concentrated YouTube algorithm that turned gang drama into an online mega industry. One of the channels in this algorithm is called No Jumper, which is quite different from the Warren Chirac, but nonetheless features many interviews with gang-related rappers. Do you even know about gang shit when you first moved to Florida? When did you actually become a five five crip? You are widely known Wait, to be associated with the Hoovers. Some of the dudes who got caught up for this murder are like actual rappers who have videos out with, with many, many thousands of views. Again, like you say, a lot of the stories are hypothetical, but in this, this one, you actually mentioned that a specific guy. rapper from Chicago called a girl six times while you were hanging out with her. Right. It just ran. You see what I'm saying? The shit okay. just began, man, you know. So, I went on the podcast and spoke to the host, Adam22, about the ethics of producing monetized gang content. Do you think drill music is uh, bad for society? Yeah, definitely. How come? Because people are in gangs killing each other and making songs about it and making it sound super cool. And even me as like a 30 year old fucking white man, I listen to it and I think that it sounds kind of cool and I, I struggle with that. But definitely I think it's probably, as much as I like listen to it, it's probably gotta be a net negative for society, right? Just, just the romanticization of violence in general. Do you think you help make it look cool? Wait, what? I don't think I agree with that. 
No, I don't, I don't even think I agree with that. Making songs about it and making it sound super cool. And even me as like a 30 year old fucking white man, I listen to it and I think that it sounds kind of cool and I, I struggle with that. But definitely I think it's probably, as much as I like listen to it, it's probably gotta be a net negative. For I don't know, man. People struggle, people have their problems, man. And they finally try to find a way out of that mental state. And for them, if, if releasing music and, and doing something out of, their, out of their heart and putting that rage out into a fucking song, and that's what ends up being monetized, giving them, giving them money. So fucking be it, dude. So fucking be it. It's like, I don't, I don't, wait, why, why, why will not agree with that? What? I don't get it. I, I, was, I was at a question mark. For society, right? Do you just, just the romanticization of violence in general. Do you think you help make it look cool? Mm, I don't know. What, I feel what, like what, when what they're what on a beat about? with a fucking 808 going crazy, and well, they're able to like rhyme and make less sense that that probably is like when it sounds coolest because they don't really talk about that in interviews right i mean most of like the, all the chicago like gang members or whatever it's like the I amount of like I street video, shit you're gonna be able to get them to talk about in an interview is pretty minimal in comparison to the stuff that they're essentially saying in their songs it just must be crazy because like you talk to so many people who like have died recently <sighs> like you're you're like the last person to interview um fbg cash right there his name's on the wall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you feel any responsibility for like inflaming like gang beef by having so many gang members use this platform to promote themselves? No, because I mean, I feel like this is a hip hop platform. It's crazy. That you guys are gonna agree with you guys are gonna agree with that and whatnot, right? And and then and then uh, a bunch of songs about like hardcore drugs and mega drug usage and 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 fucking using a bunch of fucking narcotics and going going mad on fucking drugs. And a bunch of fucking rap rappers dying from it while talking about it. And you, yeah, Paul Champ, Poggers, but not like I don't know. Like it's, it seems to me that there's there's hypocrisy here, man. That long ago has kind of been clear to me what? that that's more no, or that's less the, the it's, gist it's, it's of what he's example. doing. You know, like there was a long time where I didn't do any street shit. You know, in the beginning it was mostly like SoundCloud type stuff and more like avant garde you know, internet shit. We've gone more in that direction. And like a lot of like, it's also the direction rap's gone in. It's, it's tough to get away from the fact that the fans just want what they want. You know, as a content creator, you kind of have to follow the incentives to a certain extent. It's just been taken to the point where as long as you can succeed doing other things, it's fine. And you know what? People do succeed doing other things. As long as it's not so, it's so, so prevalent that only that, you, you can only have that to make it. I, I don't have a, I don't, I just, I don't know, man. You know, as a content creator, you kind of have to follow the incentives to a certain extent. It's just been taken to the point where the fans like want How's this shit bad, to be how's it a bad take? real. They don't want to hear you say, I'll, I'll shoot you if, if you come near me. They want to hear you say, so-and-so from the other side got killed because he fucked with me. Like the fans are really drawn to that kind of immersion i guess whenever you grew up here did you guys spend a lot of time in other parts of chicago like did you ever go like downtown or to other areas or were you mostly here uh, anyway, i spent a lot of years inside this gate have you been to uh, like a cubs game or anything no. you guys want to go to the white Sox game with us yeah yeah, yeah we go. Go. white Sox for white Sox. white Sox. Go Sox. Yeah. fuck the cubs fuck the orioles fuck the yankees white Sox. White Sox! 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 They represent the South Side pride, that blue collar man. Like, the South Side's way better than the North Side. And you wear condoms unless you have to. <laughs> What's the situation in which you'd have to use a condom? Every time. Never. Never. <laughs> I'm married, what? so I haven't actually used condoms in 15 years. <laughs> Raw dog stands for Jack Harlow. Jack Harlow only. Sorry. Sorry. What? what? What do you think about condoms? What do I think about condoms? I got six kids right there. Raw dog, all day long. Jack Harlow is not my type. What makes White Sox fans different from other fans? Sometimes they wear white socks, but not on a regular basis. Loyalty. Why? Why? Are you guys from Chicago? No. No? no? Exactly. What do you think your most controversial opinion is? Like, what do you mean about that? For example, I believe that aliens have visited the United States of America. Nice. So do I. 
Uh, I also believe that the earth is not, it, it's not round. I also believe that the government is hiding a lot of ship mods. I also believe that the government has taken over our, you know, our country. And like, you think the earth is flat for real? Huh? You think the earth is I flat? I mean, we have Boy, that's the ideas, whole point. right? We have ideas. So, like, who, who are we to judge? White Sox hamburgers. Comiskey dog right here. We got two patties, two scoops of cheddar cheese, and we put the pico and dagaya on top. Say it ain't so, Joe. Hamburger, 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 hamburger. What's your biggest fear in the world? All right. Hot dog, hot dog, hot dog, hot dog, hot dog, hot dog. How do you feel about the rapper Yeet? He's all right. Can you name, can, can you name five songs? Turban, Mad About That, Sorry About That, Money Is So Big, and uh, what's it called? Pop in it. Pop in it. What's your favorite thing about Yeet? Poppin'. the music. What would you say if Yeet was here right now? I don't know. What would you say if you could be digitally connected with Yeet in some form? Come on, Yeet, answer the goddamn phone. God damn it. We love Yeet! We got we made it. We actually made it here, guys. Yeah. Fucking drink to that. We are the, like the epitome of sperm. Yeah. We are sperm at its best. You're a philosopher. I, 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 th I consider myself a philosopher, yes. Would you guys want to hear my whole philosophy? Yes. yes. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. What, dude, get, dude. You're going to go in, bro? You what is this guy doing? doing? Fuck, what man. Is, this is my philosophy. Move. You just saw it happen. I didn't know that guy. I didn't. I, I could not associate with him of any particle of my own being. But I let him go through. Because he's a, he's a fellow human being, you know? So his agenda, you got to consider that. And he wanted to go through. It, it wasn't, I don't know, um, but I know. Like, uh, you know, like negatively imper imperative to me. So I let him through. That's what I think we should all do, you know? Try to fucking make it better for everybody. If you can. Different team might be the same team in the long run. We don't know. Might be different teams right now, could end up being on the same team, but, you know, right now, he's not on my team because I don't know who the hell he is, but we're both at the Sox game, so I guess we're not on the same team in that sense. I need y'all for that documentary, though, for sure. So, for sure. I'm, uh, I'm definitely I'm, do I'm, it. I'm gonna really push out to him. Yeah. But that was something. I did a video, though, it was really good. Interesting. Okay.